Sam Green. Hello. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Uh, super excited to be doing this. For for those of you out there, and I'm seeing more and more folks jump in. Thanks for joining. Uh, this is now the second Base Path webinar. And I'll be honest, and I can say this because Greg is a friend, by far the best guest that we've had, Sam Green joining us today. Um, similar to last time, folks, like we can't see or hear you. Um, please drop Q&A into the, there should be a little Q&A box in there for you if you have questions for, for Sam. Um, we're going to kind of jump into just a, a couple of you know, canned questions, things that we want to talk to Sam about while we while we get going here. But we're going to probably take, you know, 15, 20 minutes of, of just kind of conversation and then opening it up to the to the broader group. Um, again, similar to last time, if you have any questions or thoughts or ways to improve this thing for us, like let us know. We're, we're all ears. I'm going to try to continue to make these things as meaningful and exciting for for the audience as we can. But uh, Sam, thank you. Great to Thomas, see you. Thank you. How are you? Good to see you. I'm good. How are you? Uh, yeah, excellent. <laughs> really appreciate you taking the time with us. One of my absolute favorite people within the space. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, I'll just brag on Sam for a, a moment. But, you know, I think we have a lot of folks, you know, out there listening in large part. I don't think that's because they want to hear me talk. They want to hear, hear Sam. Um, Sam is one of the the leaders within the industry when it comes to to content creation, student athlete marketing, uh, really just kind of NIL marketing more generally. Uh, she's done great work with student athletes, brands, collectives, universities, um, and we're super excited to be talking to her. For those of you that don't know, also has a master's in media psychology. Sam wrote, I believe, the first ever NIL study. True, false. Very true. Yes. <laughs> true. Um, and has honestly just been one of the the great kind of folks that, if you're not you know following her on social or, or keeping up with you know the the things that Sam's doing within the industry, I highly recommend it. You know she's constantly on the cutting edge and and bringing a ton of value to her audiences and to the stakeholders that she's working with. So, Sam, thank you again. No, thank you. Appreciate it. That was a good intro. Thanks for <laughs> yeah. gassing, gassing me up. <laughs> we'll take it. We'll take it. Um, if you don't mind, would love to just kind of get started with, can you tell us a little bit about how you got into this space? And, you know, you obviously come a, a very long way within it and have a, you know, a really meaningful, I think, foothold as being the, the leader on the content and marketing side. But where did this all begin? How'd yeah, you end up here? Well, I danced in college and I danced in the NBA and I just look back and I'm like, dang, like if NIL would have been a thing, like I actually used to make content back when I was a dancer, but I didn't sure. know really what I was doing. And I got burnt out and deleted the NBA Instagram account that I had, which had a ton of oh. following and look back and it's like one of my biggest regrets, you know? And so I just like always saw kind of like this need and this gap for athletes because I wish I would have taken advantage of it. And so after college, I became a video editor at ESPN, and there I just saw even more of a gap. I'm like, man, this content creation process should not be this difficult. I would go in, work on expensive software on an eight-hour shift to produce like a two-minute highlight video for Sports Center, and I'm like, it, it cannot be this hard. So I left, learned how to do it all from my phone, and started teaching professional athletes how to create content for brands and how to build their own brand so that they could take advantage of the fan base that they have in front of them. Uh, I did a ton of things in between. I mean, you name it in sports and media industry, and I've truly honestly done it. But then NIL was legalized. I spent a year and a half at a marketplace really launching an educational platform of doing really what I'm doing, traveling to university to university, um, working with a lot of collectives, just teaching these athletes, you know, how to make content that brands want to pay for. And then, you know, simultaneously, once they learn how to make good content one time, even if it's just for a brand, now they know how to make content in general and build their own brand. So um, I've just guess I've always had a passion for all of these different things like media and editing. I did a lot of like on camera work. So I really like like the side of promoting yourself as well. You know, sure. always had a background in sports. And so like I joke around that like 
NIL is like a dream come true or, you know, like a dream industry that felt like it was like literally built for me because all of these passions right. that I've been really accumulating over, over a decade, you know, came together in one industry overnight. So. Love it. it as far as kind of the athlete side of this, you know, we have a, a ton of folks, whether it's universities, collectives, the brands, you know, the athlete to me seems like the, the most pliable and the one that it seems like you're spending more of your you know time focused on correct me if I'm wrong but you know like helping them to understand the importance of creating a brand like expanding their voice having a presence like what are some of the things that you're doing to help these athletes kind of you know step into this world because a lot of them they've got the 50 followers you know that they're bringing with them from you know high school you know and in trying to step onto a much bigger stage like what are some of the things that they can do to, you know, really kind of position themselves for success within this world? Well, the main thing that I really talk to all my athletes about is like step number one, like really what's the goal out of this? Because a lot of these athletes like jump in and just start posting and then they get really lost and feel overwhelmed because they don't have direction every day with their sport. They wake up, they know what they're doing. They know what they have to work out that day. They know what they have to work on, like mechanically on or off the field. Right. So they have like a game plan. And I notice a lot of athletes love game plans and strategy and kind of um, some structure, but they just don't know where to start. And honestly, they truly just lack a lot of confidence in getting started and putting themselves out there. So step number one, really, before I even teach them how to create content, it's like, let's align on like, what is it? And I'll give you guys like a, a literal example. I had an athlete who said, you know, cause I'm like, do you just want to go viral? Great. That's one strategy and one approach that we can build out of just chasing the algorithm, chasing views. Do you want to build a business out of it? Great. That's a completely different strategy. So just trying to align sure. step one on that. But for an example, I had an athlete tell me that she wanted to become a motivational speaker. She's a track athlete and I go to her feed and it's like, I had no idea. And she's like, yeah, but like, you know, I'll just do that when I graduate. I'm like, but how, like, how are you going to do that when you graduate? Because you're going to already lose your fan base. Who's going to care to listen to you. We got to do this now. And so built out an entire strategy on how to start positioning her content. And now she's all right. She thought she wasn't going to do this for 10 more years. And she's in college and her literal like weekend job is now getting booked to go speak at local high schools and getting paid to do it. So um, I think it's just sitting down and really also being honest with themselves. Like, sure. You know, do you want to chase the algorithm and you're going to have to commit to making a lot more content and, you know, posting daily, you know, if you don't, you want to make this a business, that's okay. Maybe once a week is all right. So I think just kind of having those honest conversations and really defining the goal then allows them to wake up and know just like their sport, like what they're creating every single day and what they're even building towards. And it's okay to pivot too. like a lot of athletes are like, Oh my gosh, well, I don't know. Like I'm scared to commit. Like, but I just, you know, we come up with the game plan, we commit and you can, like pivot once you get started so i would say one of the more amazing kind of revelations that i felt getting more involved in this industry is how incredibly sharp these young men and women are um i don't know maybe it's because i remember how silly i was when i was 18 19 mm -hmm. 20 21 like the maturity level and like the thoughtfulness of of a lot of these young athletes are off the charts from my own, you know, expectations and certainly my own experiences. I've come to find that a lot of the athletes that we talk to actually have a sense of what their brand is, or at the very least, how they resonate with certain other brands. Like as you're getting into these processes with these athletes, like how do you help them, you know, if it's not fully structured to at least kind of, you know, hone in, hey, what are you like? what do you represent? What do you want to represent? And how do you get engaged with, you know, maybe whether it's some of the brands or the organizations that are out there or, or even just kind of representing themselves more broadly to get that kind of engagement from those potential business opportunities moving forward. Ask me one more time, Thomas. How do, how do you help kind of bring structure for the brand mm -hmm. for the athletes? And I know a lot of these athletes have a sense of you know, there are certain brands that represent what I believe in. How do I best engage with them? Mm. Oh man, there's a lot of strategy, but I mean, more than anything, again, it's like, it's just like the dedication and it's a numbers game. Like if you're reaching out to brands, you have to be consistent. A lot of athletes just say, you know, oh, well this brand didn't hit me back up. And it's like, 
but, but like a lot of brands are sitting there waiting for you to follow up like a business. So really everything that right. I teach these athletes to do is like structure their mindset of like, you are a brand, you are a business and everything just kind of like trickles out from that. So there's a ton of strategy on, you know, creating a one pager that shows kind of like all your analytics or an overview of what your content looks like. Like there's all these little pieces that are great, but at the end of the day, it's really just having the confidence to pitch yourself like a business, not just a, you know, Hey, what's up? Can I land this brand deal? Right? Like we got to put in some effort and we got to have the confidence to do it and potentially even follow up time and time again. So, um, how can, how can like universities, I know a lot of, we get a ton of questions from like the NIL directors and the schools out there that are trying to, you know, bring some of those tools for their athletes. Like what are the best ways to equip these, you know, women and men with the tools to, to kind of do that. And obviously, you know, shameless plug for you, Me. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. call Sam, yeah. but you know, what are some of the things that you're seeing that are working well across different campuses today? Um, it's unfortunate, but it's like the more that you guys educate yourselves, the more you can educate your athletes. Uh, you always use, uh, Cincinnati's actually director of NIL as an example. He's constantly joining like any free webinar that I have or that I post. He's constantly even asking me questions. He's learning, he's taking like NIL certificate programs. Like, even though it's like at the end of the day, sure. more work than you're already doing. I mean, you guys and anyone that's working in sports at the university or collective level is already working more than nine to five. So I understand that it can be a lot or a learning curve for you guys to put yourself in that educational role even further, but it doesn't take much. It's even you guys consuming content, kind of like understanding what's going on in this world. You guys following other athletes that are succeeding in this space, even if they're not at your university level. So I think just any little tips or tricks or tidbits, you'd be surprised how far it goes with these athletes. I mean, you don't have to be the most knowledgeable person in the world, but um, especially for the older generation, right? If you guys are older dealing with younger athletes like if the more you're able to like relate or know or just like dive into the space the more helpful it's going to be because you're able to relate to them and their world and what's going on even though you guys yourself aren't in their shoes as you know an athlete right now trying to land brand deals if you at least know what's going on um then the athletes at least can even ask you the right questions right like they don't even know what questions to be asking if you guys aren't even up to speed with what's going on so um, even if you guys don't know the answer, right, then it's like you guys right. finding the resources, you guys finding people like myself to come in and to assist your athletes. And I noticed you guys would be so surprised how many connections in this NIL space are willing to like just jump on a call with your athletes or like just like jump in and help out because everyone at the end of the day, hopefully in my mind, is for the athletes and really trying to, you know, help right. them and help this landscape. And this landscape is so new that there's a lot of free resources out there still because, you know, no one's really fully cracked the code yet. So I think, uh, unfortunately it's more work on you guys to educate your athletes. Well, and kind of along those same lines, I know that, you know, we work with a ton of collectives. There's a lot of collectives that are starting to obviously leverage the voice of the athletes to promote their own brands, to bring more awareness to whether it's for, you know, events that are coming up or we want to continue to push our memberships or, you know, be engaged with the brand. Like, I know you've done a lot of great work in helping these organizations to, you know, the paid promo side, like getting really meaningful return on, on those investment dollars, which a lot of these collectives are, you know, they've got contracts with their athletes already to do stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and whether that stuff is social media posts or showing up for appearances or signing autographs or whatever it may be, you know, there's a lot of inventory out there for these collectives to, to leverage Tell us like some of the best ways that that these folks can get the biggest bang for their buck mm -hmm. from these athletes to, you know, hey, if we're already going to have these, you know, folks doing stuff, how do mm -hmm. we have them do stuff in a way that is most positively impacting the greater, mm -hmm. you know, organization and good? Well, one of the biggest, you know, controversies basically in this space is, you know, our athletes producing content that receives an ROI. One for the collectives, you know, like, are you guys actually getting more membership signups, more, you know, donations because of the content that you guys are already probably paying your athletes monthly to create? Maybe not. You know, same thing with brands like these brands, you know, dropping thousands of dollars and not even tracking, you know, analytics or seeing what's working or not. 
So maybe you guys aren't seeing the ROI on it. And where I really noticed extreme success is if you're not going to bring me in and teach your athletes how to create the content that receives ROI, then um, running actually like, and I don't know why more people aren't doing this, but whitelisting campaigns on social media. Yeah, um, that was what I wanted you to hit on because this is, <laughs> I think, has been a game changer. Yeah, so, sorry, didn't no, you're good. So whitelisting <laughs> campaigns, if you guys don't know, essentially, um, whether you're a collective, whether you're a university, an athlete, or even a brand, you can run a paid advertisement on social media where it looks like it's coming from the student athletes feed when it's being pushed out into the algorithm. It has their name. You are still tapping into their fan base, but it doesn't have to go on that person's actual feed. And so what I like about whitelisting campaigns is these athletes are so picky about their feed and the content that they're putting on there. And so if you're a brand and you hand them a brief, right, or even a script that you'd like for them to say, and they're probably going to say no because they feel like it's cheesy or not as organic or whatever, but that Or they're going to delete it three days after they post it. Yeah, and screw you guys, right, when you paid $3,000 to be on their feed. And so- um, you know, but that, that brief, that script may be what you guys know receives the return on your investment. So how to, how do we leverage this? Especially like, you know, we don't then want to go for an athlete that has a tiny following because they're the only ones willing to post it. Right. So we still want these bigger athletes, Well, whitelisting campaign is kind of like that solution because you're tapping into their fan base. They're willing to read whatever you want, create whatever content you guys want. You guys can help shape it or curate it more. And, you know, you're seeing more of a return. Yeah. I will tell you, anyone on this call who's working for a collective, please call Sam. Um, mm-hmm. On that piece alone, we've seen huge success, both in terms of athlete engagement, just like it's an easier proposition for them. Again, they're still going to create the content, but now it's almost as if you own the asset and can yes. replicate it and use it as many different times as you need for you know wherever you want it to play and it's mm-hmm. it's gotten you know great engagement we are seeing roi on it it's it's been an exciting one to to see um the most exciting topic for for me athlete con yeah um if you haven't seen it check it out this to me is probably the the coolest event that I've seen come into the space. And there's been a lot of really great ones that have kind of popped up over these past two, three years. But um, can you tell us a little bit about AthleteCon and, you know, where did this come from? How did this, you know, become a, a passion project for you? And I mean, I already know, but just for the, the edification of the group, like who's going to be there? What's this, you know, what's really going to be going on in, in this, you know, couple of days like i i can't you know express how excited we are to be a part of it and you know being engaged with you and and helping to support these athletes but can you give us a little bit about athlete con yeah absolutely so like i said i've really been in the nil since the very start so i've been truly at every single event that there has been um i don't want to like call any out directly and say oh they're not good enough or great there are there's a ton of great you know resources there's a ton of great events within the industry but I started actually like going up to people at these events and like throwing out what I felt like was missing. And a lot of people, you know, are like stuck in their ways or whatever, you know, don't want to expand it. And so I truly saw a gap in like events that are actually like educational and helpful for these athletes and are actually bringing NIL into real life. Like I feel like every event out there, even though this is a great style as well, it's just a lot of panels just talking at people and just talking at athletes and like, I've had so much feedback from my athletes call me like, I mean, it was cool, but it was like, honestly, just like cool for the picture and to meet an athlete. I didn't really walk away with anything tangible. And so I kept going around all these people and like, no one was doing anything about it. And so I literally was like, okay, like then I got to solve the problem myself. So yeah. June, June 1st here in Charlotte, I rented out a massive industrial building. I'm running an event. Thanks to you guys um, are going to be a part of it too, but called athlete con and it's really to celebrate these athletes and educate them more on really the content creation side too because 70 percent of these nil deals are based around brands paying athletes to make content and no one's highlighting or focusing on that so i mean that that to me seems like the coolest piece is the brands are going to be there the athletes are going to be there and it's real-time workshopping 
to to actually create content that resonates with both sides in real time like that never happens um and so to to be doing that at scale is yeah just thank you so what an incredible yeah, idea so, so thank you so basically guys there's going to be a lot of educational resources there meta linkedin canva right all these like apps and editing software industry leaders really that these athletes are needing um and everyone's going to be running a hands-on workshop so me in particular i'm going to be running um, my content creation video editing workshop, they get products in hand to actually learn how to create. And then from there, there's actually a ton of brands that are going to be giving away like product and have stations for these athletes to then go have three hours to go create in real time content for these brands. And then there's also breakout sessions where there's going to be resources like a headshot station, there's going to be a lawyer there so that you can bring any NIL contract to have it overlooked for free. There's going to be, you know, a bank there to help them with taxes or whatever. You get to kind of like pick whatever additional resource you want. Then they get a break and they get to go change into their suits and sneakers for a pink carpet awards night where the brands that were actually there that these athletes create advertisements for award uh, their favorite athlete advertisement to a year long NIL deal, which all the deals will be going through the best tech that there is in all of the industry, which is base path. <laughs> so excited to have you guys a part of it too. Oh, super excited to be a part of it. How do people get involved in this? How do we send our athletes to it? Because I know we were talking about earlier, like it's actually incredibly reasonable. Mm -hmm. um, what's the what's the best way for folks to, to sponsor their athletes, whether collectives, universities, or just even the individual athlete to, to come in and get engaged? Mm -hmm. Well, it's $700 for an athlete to go. That includes hotel for two nights, travel, and ticket in. Um, so I really wanted to make it accessible and affordable. I want all athletes to be able to go. I don't want it, this to be like this uh, such hard event to go to, right? It's about the education for me. So $700 an athlete, you guys, to ensure I'm sponsoring the first 45 athletes uh, in the door. But if you guys want to ensure your athlete's spot, you can cover that fee. All you have to do is uh, text me or email me. I just need a final head count of how many athletes you want to bring. I invoice you for that amount. And then I send you out a document for simple information, like their email, their first and last name, their sport, their t-shirt size, just so that they can get all the free stuff. And then um, we'll send over them an agreement. All the athlete has to do is agree to sign the agreement and they are locked in. You guys are able to attend as well. So collectives, universities, and brands will also be there. Um, tickets are up for sale on an early bird special of $199 for collectives, agents, and universities until April 1st. So if you guys want to go, uh, get there your you ticket now. <laughs> so 10 that, days, yeah, folks. Get in there. <laughs> Make it happen. Um, yeah, no, super excited. I think that's going to be a, a really cool one. I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about TikTok before... Yeah. We we turn it over to some Q and A, and I and I we've already got a couple of questions that have have come in. Continue to just drop them in, folks. We'll we'll make sure we get to them all before it's done. But TikTok content, oh. um, that one feels a little bit different to me in terms of you know a lot of the folks that we're working with on you know whether it's the collective or the brand side, you know hey it's Instagram, it's LinkedIn, it's Twitter, mm -hmm. it's you know maybe Facebook, but like. TikTok is kind of this whole other animal that mm -hmm. seems like a lot of the the world is moving towards, and maybe we might have to pull the plug on this thing yeah. in two days, like depending on you know what happens um, at the macro level. But how have how have you viewed the world of TikTok um, as it relates to student athlete content, and how are you helping you know athletes to use that platform? So athletes are so funny. Um, I'll get on a call with them. They'll say, I don't know what kind of content to produce if I want X, Y, and Z, and I'll give them a bazillion ideas. And then I'll find out that they have a TikTok and that they didn't even tell me from the start. And I'll go find their TikTok and they're doing everything that they should be doing, like <laughs> content wise. So the thing sure. about TikTok is this younger generation. I mean, whether we love it or hate it, I have my personal opinions that aren't positive towards the platform itself, but that's for another time. But um, love it or hate it, this younger generation is just on it. They feel comfortable on it. They feel like the audience is like younger and it is. Um, so I've noticed like the athlete that you would go on their Instagram and they have two posts, like are doing the, you know, locker room dances on TikTok. And you're like, I thought you were shy, you know? And so, um, I think that that platform I reserve for 
I don't want to say reserved for, but like Instagram to me is like their resume, like what brands like really should see. And it's more of like a portfolio versus TikTok is really culture based. It's them, it's their teammates, it's their friends. You can build a brand on there, obviously, but mainly what these kids are doing is just TikTok dances, lip syncing and day in the lifes, you know, over there, which is still great content. But um the the positive feature right now to me with TikTok that they're really pushing too is they finally launched TikTok Shop. So for brands, now it's finally important for brands, in my opinion, to be on TikTok because you can directly link your product where now all of these kids that have millions of followers from when they jumped on TikTok into COVID can actually push and sell your product versus that used to not be the case. So although in my opinion, it used to kind of be more of a culture platform. We're now seeing it to be, you know, at least more of value to brands as well. As far as kind of the splits in terms of like athlete brand deals that you're seeing, like, is it, where does the majority of it live? Or like, give me a breakdown, like across platform. Yeah. Um, I think that what I've seen, even especially from like a brand perspective, when they want to hire an athlete most brands want you to like create with the audience in mind of Instagram and they will repurpose your content on TikTok. But a lot of these brands have, you know, are run by older generations essentially that don't even want to deal with the beast that TikTok is. They don't want to figure out the algorithm. So they will hire athletes to do that for them because they know these kids already know how to kind of crack the algorithm a lot more um, sure. over on TikTok. So um, I'd say like, even to my athletes, I recommend creating specifically for Instagram because it's more like repeatable, that kind of content. Like you can post everywhere, you know, the content that they're willing to share publicly to everybody on their perfect, you know, little account in comparison to if you're creating just for TikTok, you might be creating a ton of lip sync videos, which is cool, but uh, you're not going to throw that on x or linkedin right so yeah. i look at it as kind of like instagram's the best starting place but tiktok is obviously still extremely relevant and valuable love it um i'm gonna jump over to a, a q a question that's coming from a university um where do you see kind of the the social media brand space moving for student athletes you know, in the, in the next kind of two, three years. Um, I know we've kind of got the first two, three years, like I'm, I'm now kind of riffing on it, but like, what is, where are you seeing this thing continue to trend out? Um, well, things are about to get crazy come April. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's going to be crazy. I don't know, but in my mind, what, what's happening I, in April. Isn't that when like, basically there's no rules. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah. On yeah, the NIL so, side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but so I think that's gonna really impact a lot. But what I see really with like the brand building and NIL space essentially is um we haven't even seen the start of it. Like I keep telling people, like mark my words, this YouTube generation, my nephews who grew up watching Mr. Beast on YouTube and Jake and Logan Paul, when we get to that generation kind of coming into college and brand building, it is about to be another monster. We're teaching athletes right now how to even get involved and how to care and how to monetize this thing. These kids already know. They grew up in diapers on iPads watching, you know, all these kids that are monetizing and making millions of dollars. So I think that content's not going anywhere. Brand deals aren't going anywhere. So it's only going to be almost like unavoidable. We're already starting to see where it's like you almost, no matter who you are and what you do, you have to have a social media presence. Uh, I think this one comes from maybe a happy customer of yours. It says... Have Sam talk about her workshops. <laughs> you talk to us about your workshops. <laughs> yes. Um, so if you guys want me to kind of help um, your athletes, how I really run things at the university or collective level that I've seen the most success is I run NIL content creation workshops. So I come in and I partner with a, a brand to make it hands on so we can work with one of your corporate sponsors. Uh, we can work with a local business or I can actually come in and provide product and an NIL deal for all of your athletes. So for example, I just got back from Texas. Uh, I went through Learfield. They wanted to really be able to impress some of their corporate sponsors with, you know, these athletes actually getting advertisements for their corporate sponsors. And they wanted their athletes to actually learn how to build their brands. So um, I'm kind of that solution. So I partnered with JBL. Um, we walked away in one workshop with over, you know, 60 advertisements already, already published right in that two hour workshop. 
optimized with captions, paid labels, everything, you know, is good content. They already received return on investment, you know, shoppable links where people are able to actually purchase the product. So um, I work with both, again, collectives and universities doing that. Um, I can, how I really run it is like, you can bring me in for just one day for eight hours and we can kind of structure it out or I'm taking on an exclusive amount right now, like a curated list of like longer term contracts where you can bring me in, you know, at a more efficient cost kind of numerous times throughout the year so that we can really create a customized approach. I have uh, universities and collectives bringing me in now for like office hours where I sit in an office for eight hours and we bring in, you know, all the top athletes that really care about creating for customized content strategy. So um, kind of two different ways that you can work with me. Yeah. And, and just allow me to, to further kind of emphasize like the content that you've been able to help generate and create with these athletes for a lot of our customers that I know that, that you've worked with is just so far above and beyond kind of what the, the baseline, you know, content looks like. So if you are looking to take kind of that next step of helping your athletes to, you know, generate really meaningful and valuable and, you know, professional content, it's, it's a no brainer um, for, <laughs> to, to find, you know, Sam and, and have her come in for even a couple of hours. It'll, it'll be you know, a step function change um, for the group. Next question. Um, what are the biggest issues that you're seeing out in the, the social media space for student athletes? They don't know where to start. Like it really is just that, like what I see is like they consume a lot of content and then they almost get intimidated by it. They'll see the one athlete that does know how to create a brand that is killing it, that is landing it. And they feel like they can't even take it on, especially the athlete that isn't the starting quarterback, right? Like they think NIL sure. isn't for everyone. And we all know that's not the case. We all know, you know, it may not fall into those student athletes laps that way, but I think it's just like this fear of judgment or even like fear of commitment because they don't even know where to start. So um, maybe that's a little bit more NIL specific than social media specific, but no matter what, it's I almost like more like mental healthy. Specific, it is honestly, <laughs> really, it's this right? like, comparison is the common theme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's tough. I mean, as, as far as trying to help these young women and men like overcome those hurdles, like what are some of the things that you're, you're doing to, to try to maybe demystify or like take some of that burden off of them? Well, I can speak from experience to them. And so that's really what I, I try and just shoot them straight. You know, I told you guys, I burnt out, deleted my MBA account. I've also, I've started a million brands. I had a YouTube channel interviewing professional athletes and it built up a huge following and I was able to turn it into a nonprofit and it went crazy. But I realized like a lot of like the content I was creating was because I felt pressured to post what I thought people wanted versus what I actually wanted to create. So more than anything, that's why I try and from the start, have them really identify what their goal is so that we can curate what they actually want out of it so that they don't burn out so that they're not comparing, they feel confident in their lane, they know what they're doing, and they enjoy it. And again, like you can always pivot that. But um, I think speaking from experience really helps them. And then I think just allowing them to realize like, you don't have to follow the status quo. You can, you can create whatever the heck you want to create um, really, I don't know, like prepares them to deal with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, last one that I've, I've got in the, the Q and a side is as a university, what are some of the you know easy resources for us to plug into as we're trying to, I think you mentioned, you know, your webinars and since folks in Cincinnati is like stepping in, like, are there places where you're going to, you know, educate yourself or at least kind of build some of that baseline for um, hopefully giving that to the athletes? I mean, I would say like, honestly, the easiest way for everyone to probably get the best education in like a wide range of it for free without a huge time commitment is all the newsletters that are out there in this NIL space. I mean, you could scroll X app all day and get everybody's updates, but like, it's so time consuming and very timely, like newsletters, like everyone puts their best foot forward. 
if you're writing a newsletter, like you are actually taking the time to sit down, write it, do their research. So it's a really like condensed, you know, version of what's going on in the space. And I just feel like everyone from like lawyers to, you know, agencies to whatever, like have newsletters that, you know, I should definitely do a better job of <laughs> listening to my own, own advice. But I know a ton of people, especially at the university and collective level that do that and, you know, really learn a lot. Are there any in particular that, that you're, uh, um, I say I'm hard because I like like content creation side. So mine aren't always like NIL sure. specific, but I feel like, is it NIL newsstand that I love? Yeah. NIL newsstand is super Maybe solid. it's because they write about me a lot. <laughs> so maybe <laughs> I'm biased, but, um, I think they're even their Instagram content and NIL wire is that one too? Yeah. Another good one. It's all like subconscious things. Yeah. I feel like those two. Yeah, like D1 ticker is the one that I mm, yeah, that's a staple. Can't, can't get you away have from. To. You um, have to. Yeah. You're I right. think I think NL Newsstand is doing doing great work. I, I know on three has a, a newsletter, like a daily update that they do. Um yeah, there's a bunch of them out there. I think mm -hmm. SBJ has one that they do like mm -hmm. every couple of days. Um, but no, that, that's super helpful. Um Sam, I'll, I'll just kind of wrap it up with this, like, cannot thank you enough for, for taking the time. Um, if anyone else has any other questions or, you know, things that pop up, like, feel free to shoot them our way and, and we'll make sure to, to try to get, you know, a couple of responses from Sam and, and get those back out to you. But we'll, we'll bottle this thing up. We'll, we'll send it out. Sam, can you tell us where people can find you? Mm -hmm. um, I know you've got a website, social, what, what's the best way for folks to get in touch with you? Um, I always hand out my number. <laughs> That's maybe yeah, not the most professional. My phone number, I can write it in the chat. Um, yeah, and, and we'll also add that into, you know, in the follow-up emails for, for anyone. Um, but also again. Instagram, Sam B. Green is my Instagram. I'm really good about answering my direct messages. Um, website, email. I mean, you guys name it, you know, if you find me. Um, and athletecon athletecon.io is where you Perfect. can sign sign up to join us june 1st in charlotte awesome we'll get that out to everyone again kind of with the the follow-up emails that are going to come but sam cannot thank you enough for, for taking the guys. time truly if you haven't had the chance to to work with her or follow her leading the space for athletes in, in the content creation and marketing side and doing some of the most impressive stuff within this space and We've seen a lot of folks that have been trying. Yeah. Sam stands above them all. So uh, cannot thank you enough. Um, thank you, guys. You guys Get involved in AthleteCon. Get involved Please. with Sam. Thank you all so much. Um, we'll catch you next time. Thank you, guys. Bye. <laughs>